Hi, everyone. Wikipedia is the encyclopedia which anyone can edit. It's also a community project where anyone can participate in its governance. This includes things such as finance. Readers of Wikipedia will be aware that there is an annual fundraising campaign that involves banners. And those same people who edit Wikipedia also participate in the design and management of this fundraising campaign. We're gonna talk about this today with staff of the Wikimedia Foundation. I have Megan Hernandez, VP of Fundraising here, and James Baldwin, Senior Director of Finance Strategy. Uh, James and Megan, can you please uh, tell us what is uh, finance strategy, what is fundraising in the context of the Wikimedia movement, and what, what do you guys do? Sure, I can I can kick it off. Thanks so much, Lane, for, for putting this together. I think we're excited to be talking with you today um, and, and happy to share a little bit more. Um, my name is Megan Hernandez. I'm the VP of Fundraising at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I am from California in the United States, but am living in France. I have been with the foundation for about 14 years and um, and have been working in fundraising throughout that time. I can talk a little bit about our fundraising approach. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation is supported by millions of readers all around the world um, who, who use Wikipedia, find it valuable, and uh, want to support our mission. Um, we receive donations from uh, countries all around the world. We run campaigns in about 30 countries and, um, and translate our messages in more than, than 20 languages. Um, to really be able to invite a very broad group of people to support our mission and participate in the movement. Um, our movement strategy does call on us to, um, to ensure the long-term sustainability of our mission. And we've been doing that over the years um, as the fundraising program has really evolved to diversify and have um, a more resilient um model with the campaigns that i was talking about but also through newer revenue streams like the wikimedia endowment and wikimedia enterprise that are really um aim to have this this longer term uh sustainability so that we're around for the long term great uh, all things that people can read more about online very well documented and active community discussions about all of these things anyone can participate in this james Absolutely. What Oh, sorry, what, what I was just going to share. <laughs> uh, finance strategy, what does this mean? Thanks, Lane. Yeah. Um, thanks for the question. I, I think, uh, well, we'll maybe start the introduction. So, again, I'm James Baldwin, Senior Director of Finance. And a big part of my role at the foundation um, is facilitating our budgeting process and managing our budget throughout the year. Uh, and I've been at the foundation for about seven years. Um, so, our, our finance strategy, I think, uh, is helpful to understand. It's really about how we use and manage the resources in support of the mission. So first, I wanted to maybe just share what are the things that we're deploying our resources around, the major categories of um, investment that the foundation makes even each year. Firstly, we support the technology backbone of Wikipedia. That makes our projects reliable, accessible, and secure. We are recognized as one of the fastest sites in the US, and we're working hard to deliver a similar experience in other regions of the world, including the Middle East. Africa, South America, Asia, Europe. Uh, we do this by running two data centers, four caching centers, over 30 internet peering and translocations, and over 2,000 servers. And all that's supported by a team of hundreds of engineers who support that work in various capacities and fashions. Um, that's the first area. The second area is that we explore how to provide knowledge to people wherever they are and however they need it. That and we do that in, alongside volunteers. So a few examples of this. One is we have a machine learning team that the foundation has supported since 2017. Um, we also run a multilingual platform. We have support in 320 languages. We have a, a Mint translation services, which is AI technology to support volunteers in creating translations in over 200 languages, and that includes some languages that had never before had machine translation support. All of those translations are reviewed by volunteers and edited before they're published. The third area I'd highlight is supporting volunteer communities. So we support communities all over the world. We operate a pretty complex and large grant making infrastructure that provides funds in 
not over 90 countries. Um, and lastly, we help fight misinformation, disinformation, censorship, and other threats. That's we educate lawmakers and policymakers on the importance of Wikipedia, and we just support and defend our projects and volunteers in, in the case of some threat, threats. So that's sort of what we're investing in. In terms of how the found the finances are set up, we share in our annual plan how we how we do this. Um, we've been growing as a foundation for some time really the last five to or so years until last year and then last year we entered a period of slower growth that's that's because we entered a much more uncertain environment that we saw a change in context around us including higher inflation more volatile currency exchange rates and overall slower fundraising growth so now after that period of growth that we had for some time we're now entering a, we're in a period of slower growth that we expect more in the neighborhood of five ish percent for the next several years. Um, as we think about deploying our budget, a couple of things are important to maybe understand and how we do that. One is we prioritize grants and movement support. Last year in particular, we were in a position with slower fundraising growth than we expected. And that forced us to make some hard choices and reduce costs in certain areas of the foundation in order for us to continue to fund increases in grants. We increased grants by about 7% this year. Secondly, we consider we always consider our long-term financial sustainability and stability of the organization and the mission. Um, the board has a policy of maintaining a working capital reserve of 12 to 18 months of operating expenses. That's a core part of how we manage risk and ensure sustainability for the long term and in line with what um, we've seen in other major successful not-for-profits. Thirdly, we work to align our budget to our annual plan goals, and we provide a breakdown of all of that in our annual plan, which um, we can talk a little bit more about, uh, and we can also reference last year's plan. Personnel is our largest cost of the budget. It's about two-thirds of our investments. And so what, we are, what our staff are spending their time on is one of the most important decisions we need to make each year. We also follow not-for-profit best practices. Um, rating, rating agencies like Charity Navigator have consistently rated us as a top-rated charity because we understand the best practices that they're tracking against and we make sure to, that we're in line with them. Maybe I'll stop there. Okay, James, I'm gonna reflect some of that back to you. Uh, sure. So we're not gonna talk about all these things in detail, but for anybody who wants to read more after this talk, you're gonna share me the links. I know there's documentation for this. There's active community discussing and commenting on all of these things that you mentioned. It's It's been this way for many years. Uh, in this talk, we're gonna we're gonna focus mostly on like what is your relationship to the the community in discussing these kind of things. But to recap, uh, money's used to keep the lights on of the site. This is how we say keep keep the lights on, keep it fast. Uh, we're in this new age of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Yes, I'm so glad as our many wiki community members that this is an investment. Uh, grant making, they couldn't be closer to the community. Than, than grant making. These are discussed and negotiated with the community. I encourage anyone who wants to see where Wiki community money is going to check out these grants. They're also posted publicly. Very novel and innovative that, that Wiki does this. And then uh, policy, policy issues. Why are we doing this? Uh, everyone should have access to Wikipedia. Everyone should have the right to edit Wikipedia. And then what are, what are related policies uh, to this? So <clears throat> about these money issues, about all these various priorities everywhere, uh, you both mentioned that uh, Wikipedia is multicultural, it's multilingual, multinational. You have comments from people all over the world, and we can't go into uh, full detail about how this works, but can you can you possibly make an attempt to explain how do you get comments from people all, all around the world to uh, um, come to some kind of consensus? And this this happens for things including the fundraising the money and, and and where the money goes like how how do you negotiate these things and collaborate with people on the internet that perhaps you don't know that are going by random usernames and you you come out with some kind of agreement that this is the way to do things uh, megan shall we should we go back to you for this sure yeah i'd be happy to um 
Thanks for the question. It's such a good one. I think uh, there's a lot I could talk about with our volunteer community and how we co-create fundraising campaigns um, together. And I'll, I'll jump into that. But I also want to say we have um, also a broader community of our readers and our donors, and we take their input and feedback into shaping all of our campaigns as well. Um, but I'll dive deeper into the volunteer community. Um, that That's really a huge part in how we are creating our campaigns together. Um, we just ended in December our annual English fundraising campaigns that runs um, once a year in, in a lot of the main English speaking countries. Um, and it's our biggest campaign of the year. And while it ran in December, it actually kind of started in July. <laughs> so at the start of our fiscal year is in July um, is when our team starts preparing and running kind of pre-tests and all the preparations um, for that big campaign of the year. And right alongside that, at the beginning of the year, we kicked off this collaboration process with our volunteers to be able to prepare and, and really create the campaign together. Um, and so practically what this looked like was, of course, a, a, a wiki page <laughs> um, where we put some sample banners and some ideas and just asked to, to have some some ideas of how we could make it better this year and, and you know, what, what messages folks would want to share with our readers. Um, and so throughout, you know, those six months preparing and, and getting ready for this big campaign, we just kept that collaboration up on, on Wiki, sharing ideas, sharing, um, you know, thoughts for how we could get involved. I love earlier, you were just mentioning, you know, in this age of AI, I'll say that, you know, the whole movement right now, I think, is talking about AI. And that certainly came through on the fundraising collaboration page um, and was one of the, the newer messages that came through in December um, started, you know, in the age of AI, access to verifiable information is is more important than ever. Um, or a few variations of that um, was one of the, the messages that we ran in December and that came through this on Wiki collaboration process, um, I think, really highlighting an important topic um, for for readers and volunteers and kind of the world right now. Um, but alongside the OnWiki collaboration, we also hosted calls similar to this to get together and, and have conversations. Um, we had folks from the team head to Wikimania in Singapore um, to run a workshop and, and brainstorm how we can run these campaigns together. Um, I attended Wiki North America in Toronto in November, which was just as we were getting ready to launch the campaign, it was really a good moment when, um, you know, we had folks right in person, right as we were getting ready and and uh, and work through ideas there as well. Um, so yeah, I think those were some of the, the themes and highlights from the year. And then we take that model and um, while that English campaign runs in December once a year, the fundraising team is running campaigns year round in all different countries and all different languages. And we take this collaboration model and have tried it in, in all these other countries where we run as well. Um, I think we have our page up in Sweden right now. A few weeks ago, um, we hosted some calls with the Latin American communities, um, with folks on our team who speak Spanish and Portuguese um, to join kind of existing community calls to give updates about the fundraiser and invite participation. Um, so, so this collaboration process that um, I just talked about, we're doing it year round in um, all different countries and languages and working with um, folks on Wiki and affiliates as well to help localize our campaigns um, so that we have a good local experience for, for readers in, in different countries. Thanks so much, Megan. Uh, James, could I ask you, what, what's your experience with collaborating with community on any of the decisions you make? Yeah, sure. I think it would be helpful maybe to start at the budgeting process and talk a little bit about the um, the way the community is involved in that process at different levels, and then also talk about maybe a, a more interesting case around how we do grants, which is quite unique. Um, so when we build the budget, community conversations are a big part of our planning and budgeting process. The budget then allows management, uh, the leadership of the staff leadership of the organization to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis in most cases the, the major exception being grants so each year we provide a breakdown of the annual plan on metawiki and we describe what we're currently doing we're working on the next year's right now our fiscal year starts in july so this is our period of budgeting and planning we've already sh shared the proposed product and technology 
um, objectives for next year. And uh, it was a week or two ago, they're, they're posted on a blog post and we're now getting some good feedback and input from community members. In April, we'll do the same with the rest of the annual plan and we'll provide a breakdown of the budget. And during that time, like we did last year, we'll set up and join community conversations to invite feedback and input on the work. From there, the budget goes to the board for approval. And our board has a set of legal and fiduciary responsibilities to the organization. Our board is a combination of community elected representatives. That's a, another point of community collaboration, as well as board appointed positions. And they, in practice, will approve the budget. They also set policies, decide on major strategy for the organization, those kinds of things. Um, then I'd like to talk a little bit about the regional funds committee. So our grant making, we have a, we've expanded our approach to participatory grant making um, with our last, the most recent iteration of our grant making strategy a few years ago. And in that strategy, we created regional fund committees. They're designed to increase representation and introduce more equity into the decision-making process and resource allocation decisions. We have eight committees, so there's seven, one for each of the major regions we're organized around the world, and another one for our conference grant program. They're all made up of volunteers and supported by staff in the, of the foundation, and they are the ones who make decisions on resource allocation for community project proposals. They developed a framework to guide those decisions that's um, based on evaluating the value for knowledge equity impact, for impact on the volunteer community, for impact on the movement and the feasibility of the projects. And they also take into consideration, of course, like what the resources is that are available to be distributed. We have some, we'll share with you some diff posts. It's probably interesting to read a little bit about um, some firsthand accounts of some of the members of these committees who describe what it's like participating in these decisions. Uh, we have a couple on the diff, on the diff blog on, from a recent one from a North American committee member, as well as a, a Middle East and Africa region. Yes, share those diff links. Uh, for those of you watching who aren't familiar, diff is a, a blog by means of which people get information about these things, very popular among the community. You've, you've dropped a lot of names, dropped a lot of terms. Again, we don't have time to go into all of these, but we'll have links in the bottom. And the, the point that I'm glad that you're making is that there's community process and documentation in all of these things. I've, I've got a, a follow-up question to, to both of you, a little reality check, a little situating this, all this in the, the, the here and now at this point in time. All this community collaboration, uh, if you were perhaps employed at some other nonprofit organization, or if you went to other, you met your peers, your colleagues at other nonprofit organizations in the positions you were doing, Tell me how much of this community collaboration they would be doing. Uh, how common is it for these kinds of things to happen in in your in your field of work? Hmm. Yeah, I, I can take a stab. Um, it I would say it it really depends on the stakeholders of your work, how you're engaged with them. My my background is in um, public education prior to coming to the foundation, and so. The stakeholders that we're interested in are our students mm -hmm. at a, a public high school mm -hmm. and their families principally mm -hmm. as well as the wider community and the way we engage with them was um much more in person than the wikimedia in the wikimedia movement of course perhaps not so much talking on web pages online yeah, a lot online less people? okay all right yeah. um but i wouldn't say i mean I, I don't think i could say like more or less it was just different like the way the input that we needed and the, the way we needed to align with our stakeholders in service of our mission was the goal i think was the same it's like we needed to we're in this together we need to do this together and make mm -hmm. decisions about the future of our work together mm -hmm. um so that was my experience there and it looks very different here but it's you know i think there's a lot of parallels all right Megan, how, how do you feel about this? Any anything unusual about the way this this happens in Wikipedia? Sure, um, and I do actually. I do meet with fundraising, you know, partners and other organizations um, regularly, and I do think um, we are in a unique space here in how Wikipedia is created and exists is unique in itself. People all around the world coming together, writing content, writing, creating an encyclopedia, um, and in the same way, having you know, people all around the world um, contributing and and 
making our campaigns together, um, I think is is unique, just as you, Wikipedia is unique. Um, I have worked at other nonprofits, and there are ways that stakeholders are involved, but I think in in a different kind of way <laughs> than than the way that we run our campaigns. Um, you know, there's different kinds of stories and and engagement with um, with communities with all nonprofits, of course. But um, but I do think the model that we have is is unique and to a different level than than what I hear from from colleagues in other um, organizations. All right, thanks. A unique model for I think a unique movement. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a little bit more about this movement and this is gonna be a broad question. There's so many ways you can answer it. Feel free to answer it however you like. But I, I wanna know more about the stakeholders in the Wikimedia movement who have voices or, or votes or can, can weigh in on all these conversations. Who are, who are these stakeholders? You mentioned there's the Wikimedia Foundation. There's all these people in all these other countries. We've got the, the board weighing in in different ways. Uh, what is the nature of, of the power sharing among these demographics for Wikimedia financial decisions and other strategic decisions. So again, feel free to answer this however you like. Um, yeah, so I think I'd probably start with some of the points I made in the previous answer. So we, the board, the governance structure of the Wikimedia Foundation is designed, designed to include um, community members as part of our board. Then that's like, the board is set up um, it, to meet the responsibilities and accountabilities needed as a US-based 501c3. But the composition of that board is something we can determine. So the, the organization and the movement is determined to include a combination of sort of um, community members who provide the expertise and voice of community, as well as other experts to sort of supplement the expertise and capacity that we might need on a board. And the other place, again, is the regional funds committees, which I mentioned earlier, where we've taken a um, very participatory approach to provide, to create these committees, support them with the, res the resources they need to be successful, and then trust them to make decisions ab about the, the things that they're experts in. So the, in the case of the regions, we ha have- The grants. Yeah, like community members who are from that region who understand best the needs, opportunities, challenges of that region. They can, and then they make decisions about how to allocate the grant budget and portfolio across the the proposals they get from that region. Um, which is the goal is in line to be in line with our movement strategy, several movement strategy principles of including equity and in decision making, as well as the principle of subsidiarity which I'm paraphrasing is that the people closest to the challenges and closest to the needs are the ones able to make decisions and respond to them. Subsidiarity, is that the word? Subsidiarity okay. is one, yes, of the, okay. one of the concepts that the movement strategy highlighted, yep. Great. Megan, what, what do you have to say about uh, stakeholders and power sharing? Yeah, I think um, we try to engage as many stakeholders as, as we can in in how we fundraise. Um, we talked a lot about the volunteer community, but we also um, have a very active donor and reader community. When we run these campaigns, we get hundreds of thousands of messages from donors and readers around the world telling us about Wikipedia, about our fundraising, about our work, and we really listen to that. Um, we, you know, we how, how, how do you how do you listen to a hundred thousand messages? Oh, we have <laughs> uh, we have an amazing donor relations team on staff uh, who speak a whole bunch of languages and put together human responses. Actually, respond to everybody um, and engage with them, and and we we look at our, at the the recaps and the breakdowns and what are people saying and really try to listen to folks, um, which I think is you know kind of the the spirit of this talking 2024 initiative is just to have these conversations and have a better understanding and and listen to each other and use that to inform you know the strategy and decision making and and our work together. All right, uh, I got a last question for you, for you both, uh, and this is this is going to be an opinion. Uh, what what parts of the collaboration between the community and the Wikimedia Foundation and other stakeholders work really well? What parts of this kind of collaboration are a challenge? James, what comes to your mind? I 
maybe I'll stay with the the specific example of the regional funds committees. Um, I think what we've seen and now in a couple of years of those operating is that they um, do a great job of understanding the needs and opportunities of the region. And when grant proposals are really aligned to the goals that region is working toward, they they add a lot of value. The decisions are clear. The frameworks are really helpful. When there is when the regional goals and objectives are less clear, or the proposals are sort of at a right angle to some of those things, not they're just different. It, those they have been occasionally had challenges to be able to respond and understand and think through a, a decision about sort of allocating a portfolio of investments from their from grants on how to consider these things that are different or when the goals aren't super clear. So that's been a challenge I think they've been struggling with that is maybe um, inherent to the movement. Can you say why why it's inherent to the movement? Like, Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the the reason I say that is because the goals of the goals in a, of a grantee could be hyper local. It could be global. It could be technical. There are so many dimensions that we're operating on. The ability to have like a single like what's the one thing that we're all aligned to doesn't really exist in our movement. Like well, I haven't actually. I'll, I personally haven't seen it. We all there's a bunch of different goals and a bunch of different dimensions we're working on, which is sort of normal and it makes sense. And so that makes it challenging, I think, sometimes to have goals that help make decisions about every single proposal. OK, I get it. When you're trying to share all information about all things in every language is everywhere in the world, you have to set strategic priorities. It totally makes sense. Megan, uh, what works well and what is the challenge? Sure, I think um, the collaboration process is is going well, and it's been something we've been growing and improving on over the past year. I think we're we're actually creating campaigns together, and um, I think more than than we have in the past, and that's really exciting. I think we still have work to do. Um, I think the team has been trying to share more information and share more insights of the work, so that we have more of a shared uh, understanding and can and can work through and improve our campaigns together. Um, and we also have challenges, right, with um, with with kind of changing internet environment and um, changes in trends and how people donate and how people read. Um, you know, for the longer term, we have improvements to make into our fundraising to continue to support um, to support our movement. And we need to run, you know, stronger campaigns. And so I think we have uh, room to grow and and how we do that together and how we learn together and learn how to improve um, our campaigns. So, but I feel like we have the the structure here and the people, the people we need to 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 work through that together. And Megan, I appreciate your commitment to improving sharing information. It is indeed a challenge to to share this amount of information. It's a challenge for Wikipedia editors to read and digest and respond to this information. I'd like to invite anybody watching this to look at the links below for to, to read more more about this information. Also, even if you're not a Wikipedia editor, you're still invited to read these things and comment on them. Uh, Wikipedia is not just for the editors, it's for the readers. And even if you've never edited before and you've never posted a comment, you're quite welcome to go into any of these initiatives, read them, comment, ask questions, respond as you like. Uh, Megan, James, thanks so much for joining today. Thank you, Wikipedia Signpost, for being a, a newspaper for the Wikipedia community, helping us organize and report these kinds of things. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them on the wiki. Thank you all. Thank you very Thank much for you. having us. All right. Thanks so much for a great interview, guys. And uh, Nadi, you can sim you'll please send me the recording any anytime you're ready. I, I can't promise when this is going to be in the signpost. They have their own editorial schedule, but I anticipate uh, I hope before May. You know, I, I prob probably realistically in April. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That was fun. It, it was fun. Thank thank you so much for meeting with me. Thank you. Have a good right, one. Bye bye. Bye.